Karen Cole said you wanted to see me pronto. What is it? And why are you stomping around here like a mad bull? Why the hell do you think I'm doing it, huh? Okay, what's the Renee done this time? What has she done? She has hightailed it to Texas. She thinks Austin took Vicky to Texas. She wants to be the one to find them. She told you that? No, no. She left me a note. Read it at your leisure. I'm out of here. Oh, no, wait a minute. Where are you going? Where am I going? I'm going to cop my plane, go to Texas, and bring that wife of mine back home. No, no, you... no Pa, I'm sorry. I just can't let you do that. Max, I know. I totally botched that scene. I don't know Megan. where my mind is right now. I can't think of my lines. Megan. I can't think of my blocking. You know, it's because I think I'm all caught up in Vicky and Sarah, mostly Megan. Vicky, actually. I know Megan. she's off with that horrible Megan. man, and nobody knows where she is. And the worst part about all of this is I feel so helpless. I mean, there is nothing that I can do to help. Megan! There is something you can do. What? You can concentrate on your work and your life the way Vicky would want you to. And anything more than that, you may get in the police's way. Now, believe me, Rafe is doing all he can. The police are going to bring her back alive and safe. Yeah, well, I hope come, so. Come here. Oh, uh, Megan! Yeah, I'll help you. Excuse me. I'm looking for Megan Gordon. Oh, I think you found her. Ah, oh, Miss Gordon. Allow me to be the first to congratulate you. <laughs> Thank you. For what? Did I win something? Uh, perhaps you'd understand if I introduced myself. I'm Gladys Piccolo, the real estate agent for Crystal Towers, and it's my pleasure to inform you that your penthouse is finally being made available to you. <laughs> I, I don't understand. What, do you mean, what is Crystal Towers? Oh, you know, the new building next to the Landview Grand Hotel. Oh, that's ACES project. I thought the zoning board shut that down. The restrictions were lifted yesterday, which means you can move into your new home as soon as you like. Lady, I don't know what you're talking about. He's dead. What? Are you happy now? Oh, God. Is Sarah all right? I tell you that my life has just been destroyed, and you ask me if that witch is all right. Austin, is Sarah all right? She's fine. She's going to be up and about in no time. Fat lot that that does for me. What are you doing? What do you think I'm doing? I'm untying it. Why? <laughs> Why? Why? Just shut up, okay? Just Austin. Shut up. Austin, please talk to me. What did Sarah lie, lie to you about? Austin, please. There's no use. Okay? There ain't no point in me going on. No point at all. Oh, you are so precious. Do you know your daddy's going to be so proud of you when I show him what you can do? Show me what? <laughs> oh, look, Garrett can hold his head up all by himself. That's a very important development in a baby's life. Well, so I've heard. <laughs> well, Garrick. You're becoming quite the little man, aren't you? <laughs> he's so... He's so attentive. I mean, he's just... That's another very important step. It means he's taking in the entire world around him. Well, I will just have to get you one of those colorful mobiles for your crib. How would you like that, huh? Well, that's a wonderful idea. I'll pick him up one tomorrow. Don't yeah. bother. I'll do it. Uh -uh. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> yeah. oh, I can see that you are still very angry with me for hiding Austin down in the wine I don't store. want to talk about it. We have to talk about it. I can't bear it when you're angry at me. Then you should have thought of that before you offered the wine cellar to dear Austin. I told you. I was trying to protect you and Garrick. If I had told where he was hiding, he would have made good on his threats and killed both of you. The police could have trapped him. 
and put him in prison where he belongs. But it didn't occur to you that he wouldn't be able to hurt anybody if he was in prison, did it? I thought of that, but I couldn't take the risk. What risk? Don't you understand? Even if that man was behind bars, he'd have a friend who would carry out his dirty work for him. None of us would have been safe from oh, him. Rationalize. He killed Alicia, and you gave him sanctuary. What is worse? You were going to help him escape. You even mortgaged your house to come up with the money that he needed. Michael, could you please see it from my position? No, you look at it from my position. You collaborated with Alicia's murderer, the murderer of the mother of this child. Now, you just think about that for a little bit and then ask yourself how I should feel about it. Now, let me go, Clint. Well, no, not until you let me read this note and see what Renee's got to say. Now, why don't you just sit down and uh, relax for a minute, all right? Okay? Dearest. Oh, that's right. That's it. That's the tip. Every time she calls me dearest sweetheart, something is afoot. Pa, will you let me read the note? Okay, okay. By the time you read this note, I'll be on my way to talk to our relatives in Texas. I've already spoken to Pike over the phone, and he's offered to help me track down Austin or Vicky. Oh, isn't that great? Isn't that great? Pike is going to put his own son behind bars again. Pa. I'm sorry I didn't speak to you about this before I left, but I know that if I had told you about my plans, you would have stopped me from going. Damn straight. So, I had no other choice but to go ahead and do this on my own. Please don't worry about me. I'll call if I get any leads. Your loving and devoted wife, Renee. Mm, the pain. Loving and devoted wife. Clint, I have never met a more pig-headed woman in my life. What in the Sam Hill possessed me to marry her? That's easy. The note. What, what are you babbling about? Well, the loyalty and dedication and, the, yeah, the love and devotion that she feels for you and the rest of this family. That's what that note is all about, and that's why you married her, Paul. Wish the hell I found myself a nice hound dog instead. <laughs> Stop all this damn aggravation. Well, now, I don't believe that for a minute. And you're just as grateful as I am that she's going all out to try and find Vicky. You're just mad because you didn't ask your permission. Clint, I'm mad because she could be going into a lion's den. What if Austin did take her down to Texas, huh? What if he found some sympathetic relative who's going to help him? What if Renee tracks him there? Damn it, Clint! She could be killed! Pa, oh, I wouldn't worry about that right now if I were you. Why the hell not? Well, in the first place, because she's a very careful, sensible lady. Huh. And in the second place, well, let's just say that my gut tells me that Texas is probably the safest place in the world for her right now. You don't think Austin left town? Huh? As much as it galls me to say it, Roger Gordon is, is probably right. Yeah, I think that Austin is still right here at Landview. All we gotta do is figure out where. Austin, please calm down and tell me what happened. She told me that she was gonna have my baby and that it was gonna be a son. And it was a lie. The whole damn thing was a trap. Did she miscarry? Yes! Oh, God, poor Sarah, on top of everything else. When I thought that she was carrying my baby, that's the only thing that I could think about. Now, I'll never have another chance. It's all over for me. No, wait a minute. Austin, you have to think. You have to stop and think that it was very wrong that that child was conceived in the first place. Why? Why was it so wrong? It was wrong because the baby was not conceived out of love or caring. It was the result of a, a brutal act of violence. I'm convinced that it was God's will that Sarah Don't miscarried. Don't you talk to me about God's will. Don't talk to me about loving and caring. I love that woman. I love that woman with all my heart. Is it so wrong that I wanted her to carry my child? Austin, it's wrong because every single minute of her pregnancy would remind her of the fact that, that you raped her, Austin. Is that the burden you want her to carry? Is that the way you intended to show her that you love her? You don't rape somebody you love. You don't, you don't win the respect and the heart of a woman by hurting her. All I wanted was for her to return some of my feelings. But I knew she could never love a man like me, right? 
have to be a man who's well-to-do. Have to be a man from some privileged society. Can't be one of Pike's boys. It's got to be one of Ace's sons. That's not true, and you know it. Sarah's warm, wonderful. She's caring. She never treated she you any differently. She is a deceitful and lying animal. She used my love to free her lover. So what did I do? I did what I had to. I did what I could. Don't you dare try and defend yourself. There is no excuse for rape. Rape is a, a selfish and a vicious and a cruel act. Yeah. Right. What kind of cruelty is it for her to lead me on? What about her selfishness? Lying to me to save Bo. Where I come from, she got what she deserved. No, no, nobody deserves to be raped, Austin. And I refuse to believe that there is so much evil in your heart that you feel no guilt, no shame, no remorse for what you did, especially if you love Sarah the way you say you do. I do. I love that woman. God help me, I love that woman. And I still do. But that's it. It's all over now. There's nothing I can do about it. No, 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 there is something it's you can do. Over. Austin, there's something you can do. You can turn yourself in, you can face justice, you can beg Sarah's forgiveness. I know she will grant you that much. No, no see, I don't see it that way. I think it's all become just a little bit too much. No, please, you're talking like a man who wants to kill himself. You, it's that, the that's only right. happy ending no, that no. everybody around here seems to want. No. And right now, it's the only happy ending that I want. No, you cannot mean that. There have to be reasons for you to want to live. <laughs> there is. There's one good reason for me not to kill myself. It'd be admitting defeat, wouldn't it? That would be like giving up. I can't do that to my pa. I can't let him think that his rich kin have won out. I cannot give Ace of that satisfaction, can I? You're absolutely right, Miss Vicky. Yeah. It ain't over yet. <laughs> it ain't over for a long shot. Oh, dear, there must be some mistake. Yes, and the mistake is yours. I assure you that I did not rent the Pantas apartment at the Crystal Towers. Oh, but you did. Oh, but I didn't. I've never heard of the place until now. Oh. But I don't understand. Yeah, well, I understand. If this is some sort of uh, publicity stunt or, or, or sales pitch, I really, I'm not interested in it. Are you interested in going to court? What are you talking about? You are legally responsible for the first month's rent and a deposit of $6,000. If you do not honor your agreement, then you will leave no other choice for the company that manages Crystal Towers to charge you with violation of contract. Contract? Agreement? Max, do you know what's going on here? No, but I'll try to find out. Miss Piccolo. Ms. M Ms. Can I call you Gladys? Listen, Gladys, do you happen to have any written documentation? By all that... means, will this lease do? Lease. Oh, no. What? Read it and weep. It's a lease, all right, and it's made out your name. Yeah, check the signature. Marco Dane, personal business manager representing Megan Gardner. What is so funny? I really hate to say I told you so, but uh, you should have dumped this clap before you met him. This isn't legally binding. <laughs> I'm afraid it is. Just when you thought it was safe to teach Marco Dane to sign his name. <laughs> I hope you're right about Austin still being at Landview, but it doesn't change my plans. I'm hopping a plane down to Texas, bringing my wife back, put her under lock and key and make sure she stays put. Pa, haven't you learned yet that the quickest way to get a woman to do something is to tell her that she can't do it? Damn it, Clint, I cannot let her go traipsing over God's green earth. She could get hurt. Well, I know you don't want her to, but Renee doesn't see it that way, Pa. She is bound and determined to try and find Vicky. Now, if you tell her that she can't set foot outside of, outside of the house, she's just going to be more determined to do it. Besides, if you hold her prisoner, you're going to be doing the same thing to Renee that Austin is doing to Vicky. Oh, not the same thing. All right, I get your point. When she calls tonight, she is going to get one good piece of my mind. All right, fine, but try not to burn up the phone lines, all right? I will try. Good. Of course, I wish that uh, the phone lines would start burning up in re with a response to 
Megan's televised appeal. Nothing yet, huh? Nah, there's been a couple calls coming in, but they're just crank calls coming into the hotline. Nothing that gives us any kind of a solid lead as to Austin's whereabouts. What do you got here, Paul? Oh, a package came in. I was too upset about Renee to check it out. No return address on it. Maybe it's from Austin. Why the hell would Austin send me a fax? I don't know. Maybe a, a ransom note or something. I think you're clutching the straws, but I'll put your mind at ease. All right. Well, well? Relax. It's a letter from the realty company that handles uh, my apartment complex, uh, Crystal Towers. They say that the uh, apartments can be shown, and they want me over at a penthouse for a strategy meeting. <laughs> I don't have enough to do. You know something? You know, I had a lot of problems with that building, pushing it and running it. I mean, it might just be a good idea for me to go there and check it out. Well, no, wait a minute, Paul. If you're asking me, I think that you ought to be staying here uh, in case Renee calls with a genuine lead. You just told me you thought Austin was uh, in uh, Landview, like uh, right under our nose. Well, in case he isn't, I think it'd be nice if you were here to take Renee's call. You are right. Vicky's life is more important than the promotional malarkey. Go. Go. Michael, I do understand. But you have to understand how I felt at the time. When I accidentally came across Austin in the wine cellar, my first instincts were to turn him in. But his threats were so real, I could tell that he meant it. The only thing I could do is to get him out of our lives so that he wouldn't harm you or Garrick or me. Why couldn't you come to me? I didn't want to burden you with any more problems. You were already dealing with too much. This wasn't just another problem, Gabrielle. According to your own story, it was a matter of life and death. And now... It's Vicky's life that's at stake. There was no way I could have foreseen that she would get involved with of it. Of course not. You were busy coming up with lies and stories. Because you avoided the truth, you created a disaster. Look, I realize now that my decision was totally wrong. But at the time, I felt I was doing the right thing. I also know this has turned into a horrible nightmare. But I did all this for you. <laughs> and for Garrick. Michael, surely... Surely you can find it in your heart to forgive me, please. I can't forgive you so easily. As a matter of fact, you'll have to move out of here unless you can make me one promise. Anything, anything at all. I want your solemn oath that you will never deceive me again. No matter what it is, you're going to be honest and open with me. Do you understand? Yes. Yes, I promise, no more lies. Because as God is my witness, if you ever lie to me again, especially about something this important, I will have nothing more to do with you. <laughs> you stop laughing like a demented hyena and do something about this? I'm sorry, I'm sorry, but you are all on your own on this one. Besides, I promised Kelly I would rush right home after I got done with work. Al's still got some problems, and, you know, we haven't gotten the test results back yet. Look, I know that you're concerned about your son, but I was hoping I'm you would help me out here. You got yourself caught in Marco's little web. You get yourself out. Okay, fine. Go and help Al. He needs you more than I do. I can do this on my own. I had a feeling you could. Please, don't be too rough with him. <laughs> oh, goodbye, Miss. Miss Piccolo, this is what we're going to do. You're going to take that contract which was signed without my knowledge or my consent, and you're going to tear it up. I can't do that. Allow me to show you how it's done. Please, Miss Gordon. I'm as much at a loss as you are. In all my years as a real estate agent, I've never run into a situation such as this. Yes, well, all we need to do is to tear up the contract and pretend like it never happened. I cannot destroy a legal document. Well, then we have a problem here, don't we? I'll have to speak to my superiors about this. Yes, you do that. I'll get back to you. No, 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 I'll get back to you. And don't be surprised if you see Marco Dane's blood all over my hands. Personal business. Okay, Marco, if I get your machine, I'm gonna beep you right upside the... Marco! Hi, Megan! No, don't honey me! Get your butt over to the studio, pronto. Yes, there's something wrong. Something's very wrong. Now, get over here. Well, now that all that is settled, 
Could we please put away the long faces and try to enjoy the rest of the day together, what's left of it? You know, I was thinking that the three of us could go on an outing, maybe get an early supper. Uh, I don't know. Well, why not? It, it would be a very good way for us to forget this argument. Please, Michael, don't let someone like Austin get in the way of us. No, it's just that I don't have time for an outing with you and Garrick. Why not? I have a very important debt to repay, and now is the time to take care of it. I'll get it. Hello? Uh, Gabrielle, it's me, Kelly. Uh, Kelly, yes, what can I do for you? I was wondering if you could tell me where I could find Max. Uh, uh, he's usually at the studio at this time of the day. I know, I tried there, but they said he already left. <laughs> well, then I have no idea where he is. Uh, thanks anyway. Oh, uh, Kelly, is there something wrong? I know, I'll just, uh, I just needed to talk to Max, that's all. Is it Al? Is he all right? I can't get him to stop crying. Uh, look, I'm on my way over. Look, you really don't have to... No, look, I'll be there immediately. Okay. Uh, Michael, wait. What's the matter? I've got to go, it's Al. But I was just on my way out. I know, I'm sorry. Look, I will tell Melissa to take care of Garrick. I'll, I'll see her on my way out. <sighs> what is all that, Austin? Oh, it's just, uh... Some of the things I'd picked up. I figured that Sarah and I would be settling in here for a while. Like, uh, here. I bought her some of her, her favorite perfume. Hey, smell that. Isn't that nice? Oh, huh? lovely. Yeah. yeah. Oh, look at this. This is something that I, I bought for her. I thought it was pretty. And look, 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 look at all the things that I got for the baby. You know, some toys and some clothes. Oh, God damn. How could I have been so stupid? What did I think? That she was going to want to spend the rest of her life with me? <laughs> Austin? What? Um, I was just wondering if... I was just wondering what... what your plan is now. I mean... the baby is... Uh, baby's gone and, and, and Sarah's bound to be surrounded by police. You won't be able to get to her. Uh-huh, 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 uh-huh. So, yeah, what's your point? Well, my, my point is really that there's no reason for you to stay here anymore. There's certainly no reason for you to hold, to hold me hostage here anymore. Austin, please, I think the sensible thing for you to do is to turn yourself in. You're talking about me giving myself up? Yes. There's no way I'm going back to prison. You see, I'm going to have my freedom. So, might as well just settle back, you know, relax. This is where we'll set ourselves up for a while, until the heat goes down, right? And then we'll, uh, we'll find ourselves a good time, and we'll just slip right out of town. Austin, you have to listen to me. You have to know there's no way this plan can work. Why? Why not? Because the, the heat, yeah. as you put it, is never going to go down. My husband is not going to stop looking for me. The, the rest of the family's not going to stop looking for me. You... You have to know that it's useless to try and get out of this town with me. Oh, yeah, 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 okay, you're right. So we'll just stay here. Yeah. We'll just stay here for a long, long time. Mal? How down, dare honey. you do this to me? Mal, How I dare you sign that, my name to a contract for a penthouse that I didn't even down. want? Come down! You just squeeze your neck oh, right now wait. until this earring pops you just out of your ear. Me a chance to explain. Give you all oh, I want to explain. the best for you. You're in a totally unhip situation there at the Waterside Inn. I happen to like the Waterside Inn. There's nothing to like about the Waterside. You're a star. You deserve grooviness. You deserve elegance. You what, deserve... and I deserve to pay $9 million in rent? Honey, you're being Don't unreasonable honey Don't right honey at this me. moment. Don't my God, me, my it. honey, you. That is it. You got me into the contract, you're going to get me out. All right, maybe I will get you out of the contract, but you know what? There's a little legal technicality right here, and you know what that is? I can get you released, but you're still going to have to pay the deposit. For what? Because you broke the lease. 
What? I may have to pay $6,000? You do have to pay $6,000. It's here in the small print at the bottom of the contract. I happen to read these things because I'm very thorough about legal technicalities. Yes, well, you signed this contract, not me. But I was acting as your manager, so... Yeah, great. Well, then you better start saving your pennies, honey, because I'm telling you, if they make us pay $6,000, it's coming out of Sweetheart, your pocket. Sweetheart, I not haven't mine. got any money. There's nothing living in my pocket but the moles because it's so dark and it's so empty there. Just I didn't like mean your to head. give you a lead-in for that. Please. I have a solution to this. Mm -hmm. If you come with me right now, we'll no, go over no, to the no, apartment. No, 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 I am not stepping one stuff. foot into that Do apartment. Do you want this lease taken care of or not? Yes. See, it says so here on page two. If you'd be willing to bear me out for a second. It says, uh, whereas... Um, said model penthouse is not available for immediate occupancy the tenant shall have the right to inspection before taking possession hey <laughs> but don't you understand what this means this means that you can get out of this you go there you see something you don't like and bingo you're out of it oh yeah i don't like the apartment and they're just gonna let me out of the lease is that what you're saying that is exactly i just said that what's the matter with you i don't know marco i really don't know sweetheart you're going to do this for me right Honey Bunch, you're going to come with okay, me. Okay, fine. I'm going to call Miss Piccolo now. <sighs> Sweetie, you're the greatest. <laughs> come. <laughs> Did Rafe at least decipher any of this for you? Well, this is a photocopy of the police stakeout plans. This tells us what places are being watched, and this tells us how many officers are... Uh, how many officers are assigned to the case? Well, I tell you, when Rafe goes out, he really puts out the big guns. I mean, he's got seven men over here at the hospital, six at the Grand Hotel. There's six more here, and look, he's got ten down here. Well, there's no doubt about it. If Austin is still in town, Rafe and his boys will find him. <laughs> Excuse me. Nigel said I should come right in. What a surprise, mister. Everybody in this house knows you are not welcome. I didn't come to visit, Asa. I came to help. How? Well, if the police are unable to find Vicky, I am more than happy to offer any assistance I can. For instance, I could hire private detectives or some security people to watch over Renee, Sarah, anybody else in your family. You have the audacity to tell me you don't think I can defend my own family? Pa, oh, he didn't say that. Doesn't have to. I can see that little smirk on his face. Let me tell you something, mister. I don't need you, your help. I can take care of my family myself. Not do an about face and go out the way you came in. No. I want to help. I want to find Alicia's murderer. Oh, I assume you're talking about Austin this time. Because the last time you were convinced that my son Bo was the murderer. How many times do I have to tell you? I was convinced Bo was guilty because I was not thinking clearly at the time. I was acting out of grief over my wife's death. Now, do you want me to apologize again? I am sorry, Asa, and I mean it. Pa, come on. Uh, we've been through all this before. I uh, even shook hands on it. Why dredge it all up again? Because it gnaws at my gut. Every time I think that my son could have spent the rest of his life behind bars. Yeah, but he doesn't have to. Now, this is over and done with. We've all made our peace with Michael. Now, let's keep the hatchet buried, okay? Vince, right, Asa, and I want our reconciliation to mean something. Now, please, let me know if there's any way I can help. I will accept your help, Michael, but not Gabrielle's. Why? She's as upset about this as I am? Mm. I know you're a match set, but never will Gabrielle be part of this forgiveness. And I would die a very, very happy man if I never set eyes on that woman again. Thank goodness you got back. I just couldn't get out to stop crying. Yeah, well, at least he's calmed down a bit now. Well, he's yeah. always calmer when he's with his daddy, aren't you, Al, huh? Al? Can I ask you a question? Aren't you gonna answer? I said you like it when you're with your daddy, don't you? Pal? Hey, you feeling okay, partner? What? Okay, Mr. Wait, 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 just a minute. Don't come any closer. Don't, what? Why? No, just, I'm not sure. Just uh, uh, call Al, would you? 
What? Just call out his name. Al. Al, that's mommy. Al. Max, what's the matter with him? Al. Hi. Hi, mommy. Hello. Max, why didn't he turn around when I called him? I think we better get him to a pediatrician as fast as we can. I hope I'm wrong, but I'm afraid Al may be losing his hearing. What have you got against Gabrielle? I have said all I'm going to say. Hey, sir, I've known you a long time. It's obvious that you are very upset with her. I'd like to know why. The subject is closed. Is it because she pushed the wine rack that injured Sarah? Because that was an accident. She was trying to pin Austin, and he got out of the way just in time. I guarantee you she had no idea that thing would hit Sarah. I know. The police told me that. Then there's nothing to blame Gabrielle for. I never said there was. Then what are you saying? Michael, we were friends before you came to Landview. Our friendship has been to a, to, through a very serious test here. And now that we're friends again, I'd like to give you a little bit of advice. You give this Gabrielle Medina a very wide berth. And don't get a, let her get too close to you. Because she'll wind up doing more damage to you than she already has. What are you trying to tell me? You want it in English, Michael? Fine. Gabrielle Medina is a sneak and a cheat. And to think that she's going to be a substitute for that wonderful, charming wife who died needlessly. <laughs> I see. Well, I can appreciate that we're friends again, Asa, but that does not give you the right to advise me on my personal affairs, including my relationship with Gabrielle. Is that clear? Just don't forget that I warned you. My offer of help still stands. Just let me know if there's anything I can do. Clint? Pa, I've always known that she was not one of your favorite people, but I've never heard you speak quite so poorly of her before. That's because her colors have never shown so vividly before. What colors? What has she done? Sit down. I will tell you Gabrielle Medina's latest prank. And if you don't see that woman in a different light, then I am not Asa Buchanan. So don't you worry your pretty head about being bored while you're with me. I mean, after all, I am a Buchanan. And you did marry a Buchanan, didn't you? Must be something about us you like, huh? Who knows? Maybe after a while, you'll even grow to like me. I don't dislike you, Austin. I just think you need help. Hey, do you know that I'm a really terrific storyteller? No, I didn't know that. No, no, I mean, I really am. I'm top rate. So I could... I could tell you stories about Texas, huh? I could tell you stories about oil wells and rigs and things like that. I could tell you, I could tell you some stories about prison. I mean, those that keep you glued to the edge of your seat. I'm sure they're very interesting. Interesting? They're riveting. Mm -hmm. I mean, riveting for a long, long time. Hmm? Hey. Do you play checkers? Do what? Do you play checkers? Checkers, you know, checkers, I jump you, you jump me, you king me, I king you. No. I mean, I played as a child. I don't, I don't know how to play anymore. Oh, come on. Damn, that's my favorite game. I'm king of checkers in prison. Shoot, how about cards? You play any cards? What cards? Oh, you know, poker. Oh, come on, pinochle. No, I'm sorry. Come on, war, hearts, rummy. No, Austin, I'm sorry. I'm not big on playing games. You're not? You're pretty big on playing the game you're playing with me right now. You know how to play checkers. You sure as hell know how to play cards. You just don't want to give me the satisfaction of saying it. Austin, I swear to you, I am telling you the God's honest truth. Well, then what are we going to do to amuse ourselves all this time? I have no idea. Well, you better think of something. You better come up with some ideas before I come up with some ideas. I may not like some of the ideas that I come up with. No, you wouldn't. Oh, 
I wouldn't. No, you wouldn't. Maybe I would. No. You know, I find you so attractive. No. That's the elevator. It's coming up here, isn't it? Oh, God, Austin, I told you it was useless. I told you they would find us. You just sit there and you shut up, because I got to do some thinking real fast. Who the hell could that be? What the hell do they want here? What the hell am I going to do about it? Kelly, when did you first notice that he wasn't responding to you? Right before you came in, I asked him a question, and he didn't answer me. And then Max asked him a question, and he didn't answer him either. Oh, sweetheart, it's going to be all right. Everything's going to be fine. Thank you, doctor. We'll be there within the hour. Uh, listen, Dr. Wesley says she can see him in half an hour. Kelly, would you mind dressing Al? No problem. Come, Come on, on. Kelly. Let's go. Max, what does she think the problem is? She doesn't want to make any guesses over the phone. She said, bring him in, she'll give him some tests, see if he's losing his hearing, and if so, why? Oh, God, I'm frightened. What if he really is to... No, no. Listen, it, it may just be temporary loss of hearing due to his illness. There's no reason to panic now until the doctors figure out exactly what is wrong. But we've got to remember one thing. No matter what the outcome, we're going to have to be strong for Al's sake. Yes, of course you're right. No more fighting. No arguing. From now on, we pull together, do whatever we have to do to help him. I agree. Put our differences aside, because our son is it's the only thing that's important right now. He's all that matters. Well, let's get him to the doctor right away, OK? Yeah. Paul, are you telling me that Gabrielle tried to blackmail you to the tune of $50,000? $50,000 to keep her mouth shut about me burying Austin on the top of the mountain. Well, the question is, how'd she even know about it? I figured she was in the backseat of the car as I drove up Old Mill Road. Well, in the first place, what was she doing in the, in, in the back of your car? Why would she be hiding? I kept pressing her and pressing her. I couldn't get anything out of her. Well, you know what I think? I think she knows more than she's saying. You're, you're talking about Austin, that he may have really been hiding in that wine cellar. Yeah, for starters, for starters. But you know the police questioned her and they they let her go I guess they figured uh, they got all they could out of her well maybe it's time she was questioned by a Buchanan I agree with that I only hope that we're not uh, just speculating that's all and I hope that she knows something that will lead us to Austin and to Vicky here we are isn't it everything I said it would be? Well, it is pretty nice, I must say. The view is spectacular. On a clear day, you can see as far out as Lantano Mountain. Oh, yeah, well, you have to like mountains. I'm, I'm not going to look at the furniture. It didn't just come out of a store, you know. It's custom made. And just feel how soft the leather is. Miss Piccolo, Go I'm... ahead. Feel it. You like it, don't you? I can tell. Oh, the furniture, the view, the luxury. It's perfect for a television star of your stature. I knew you'd decide to take this lovely penthouse as soon as you saw it for yourself. Gladys, I'm afraid we have a problem. Such as? The furniture is exquisite, but you know, it just doesn't have that uh, uh, come on, sit on me kind of quality to it. I think it's kind of cold, uninviting. I think the place is kind of cramped. I think the floor plans lied to me. This place is a lot smaller. I'm sorry, but I have cramped. to disagree. The floor plan is accurate. And this penthouse is extremely livable. It's warm, it's inviting, and it's extremely spacious right down to the closets. Closets? Closets do not a penthouse make. You're wrong, Mr. Dane. Gracious closets is the best indicator of a livable home. And if you'll allow me to show you exactly what I mean. Yeah. Make one sound, and I swear to you, it'll be your last. Uh -huh. 